Judge Jackson, as uh, Senator Booker was providing his closing comments, I could only think, uh, and they were very powerful, that if you like Tiz, how much you're going to like mine on the subject of intellectual property. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but before I do that, I know you've uh, you've been spending a lot of time here. Uh, do you have much experience in matters of copyright protection, patent protection? Senator, I um, mentioned earlier that I did a trademark case. Yeah. Um, not By that. By the way, I looked up the menu. Uh, it looks did like you? a really good menu. I think it's a good restaurant. Yeah. They they yeah. they had a lot of evidence to that effect. I, I haven't done a lot of uh, food or restaurant. Uh, trademark work, but uh, when I came to judiciary, uh, fortunately, the uh, the former chair and the current chair indulged us in reinstituting the intellectual property subcommittee. And I love that committee because you really have to work hard to be partisan in it. And in <laughs> fact, it's not partisan. I worked very well with, as the chair, with uh, Senator Coons and done very well with uh, with uh, Senator Leahy and Senator Rono and working together on things that I think are really important because I think one of the things that make the, our country great is the Founding Fathers got it right on understanding the value of intellectual property and how it could catapult us into the innovation powerhouse that we are today. Um, so I may ask you a few questions about it, but I'm not going to dig uh, too deeply. I do want to go back to maybe getting a suggestion from you. I thought, uh, I told you, I don't even pretend to be an attorney, but I am uh, about 30 years into technology. As a matter of fact, I spent two years in Boston at Wang Laboratories, and, and it was no coincidence, having been born and raised in Florida, that I moved one September because I couldn't bear another winter. Um, <laughs> but... Um, but I've, made, I've been in the, the technical field. I, I was working on, in, uh, on IP or Internet Protocol before anybody knew what inter, Internet Protocol was back in the early 90s. And um, I do think that we should go away and understand the threat. If you've seen the multiple of uh, illicit activities, and, and for the purposes of this discussion, um, child pornography now, imagine what it's going to be like five years from now. Hmm. Um, I was talking with uh, someone in the hallway. Uh, they're taking a playbook from drug kingpins, the, the, the creators and the, the aggregators and the distributors are using technology, I think in some cases, to reach out to people and incent them hmm. to go to these websites to infect their computers, to download thousands potentially from a single click. I think that we have to examine these criminal enterprises and put law enforcement resources into cutting the heads off of these people, figuratively speaking. And one of the ways you do that is to provide, I think, more ways to go about, prosecute more technology that we need to cut down the supply. But we still have to deal with the demand. And that's another area where these um, criminal organizations and others are taking advantage. And you know, today, if you think about technology 10 years ago, it was a little odd, at least 15 years ago, to see a child. I've got two granddaughters. Uh, one is four years old, one is two years old. They're technologically savvy. As a matter of fact, I love talking to them on the phone, but even my two-year-old knows how to deal with the filters to make me look like I've got uh, <laughs> rabbit ears and everything. They're technologically savvy. There's a real danger there that these uh, horrible people, and I genuinely believe that you think they're horrible people, are going, excuse me, they're going to infect and destroy a lot of lives. And so I don't know, is it with the Sentencing Commission? How would you, how, and, and incidentally, this is a toxic subject uh, in Congress, because if you start talking about better understanding those, most people are going to run away from it. But we do it at the expense of destroying a lot of victims' lives. So I don't, 
uh, unless you have ideas off the top of your head, I'm trying to get an idea of how we can make people understand. We, maybe we could even have a discussion to say that the penalties today are the floor to, to begin the discussion, just to simply eliminate people from making this so toxic that we don't better understand it and get ahead of it. But how can we even start having an intelligent discussion and a productive discussion where Congress is clearly going to need to act to do what I think everybody in this room wants to do, is, is just erase it from the planet of the Earth, or at least make a lot of progress, because quite honestly, it has exponentially grown, and there are exponentially more victims today than there were even 10 years ago. Any ideas? Thank you, Senator. I actually don't. I haven't been um, working on or looking at or dealing with sentencing policy for a long time now. Um, in my work as a judge, we're looking at individual cases, not systems or crime organizations and, and policies related to them. Yeah. Well, I, do th I think it's something that, that we should take seriously. And after we cool the temperatures and, and have people have legitimate concerns about some of the rulings, I think that we have to clear up some of the complexity and recognize that Congress is a part of the solution. Okay, now on the weighty subject of intellectual property, are, are you familiar with the copyright preemption uh, under Section 301A? Um, no, I haven't worked with that. Okay. I wouldn't have expected you to <laughs> uh, necessarily, but, uh, and I won't get into uh, patent questions. We've got a lot of work. Uh, that I think ultimately is going to require us uh, getting rid of the shambles of jurisprudence that we have. It's a very complicated field. We've got a lot of mixed signals and uh, current jurisprudence, and uh, my committee's working on that. So it may be something that ultimately works its way up to you all if you're confirmed. Uh, but I'm not going to take a lot of time, particularly because the hour is late and I intend to yield back some of my time. I do want to go back because I felt like this morning when I went through uh, some of my comments, uh, I mentioned law enforcement. I talked about a couple of your decisions that gave me pause, mainly, <clears throat> excuse me, because, um, you know, law enforcement's under attack. Um, law enforcement needs to be held to a high standard. I've been involved in this for nearly 22 years, making sure that when I was a town councilman, that we did something audacious and spent a lot of money in getting our law enforcement officers in a small town of only 20,000 people, CALEA certified, that's a national certification to make sure that they understand how to de-escalate, uh, get engaged in the community, and, uh, and reduce crime, and, and, it, and it worked. But now we've, you know, there are some people that think it's fashionable to attack the police um, and to defund the police, and quite honestly, there's increasing data that suggests the communities that are loudest about that are becoming the least safe. So I want to ask, you mentioned several times, I think yesterday and, and, and more today, about your methodology. So if uh, is the United States versus Jenkins fresh in your mind or roughly fresh in your mind? Um, a criminal pleaded guilty to assaulting a law, assaulting a law officer. Uh, it was his third conviction. Uh, in, in assaulting a law enforcement officer. The government rang, recommended 30 months. The defense recommended 21 months, and you decided to go with an 18-month sentence. So I was trying to, does it, do you recall? I the, don't recall. I would want to look at the records and see the probation office's recommendation as well. Okay. And, and that, again, is something I wouldn't have access to. So I'm just trying to figure out what the mitigating circumstances were, and there were other ones, and, and unless you immediately recall it, I'm not going to, to ask you to go into details. The other one was United States versus Weeks. Uh, similar situation. Um, there was a 24-month request from the government uh, uh, for the conviction on assaulting an officer, and you gave them 12 months. And uh, are you from, or does that ring a bell, United States versus Weeks? I think Weeks had a number of different appearances and there were different aspects to his case, but I'd have to look at the whole file to yeah. recall. That, um, I, I just feel like the, um, again, because I know that you've uh, rendered some 100 sentences over 
uh, a period of time. I wouldn't expect you, but it, but it, do, it is an area that uh, it will submit it as a question for the record so that maybe you can uh, refresh your memory and uh, try to get back on that because it's something that I, for one, think that we need to uh, place a priority on. We've got so many law enforcement agencies across the uh, country now, excuse me, that um, we're having a hard time recruiting people and having a hard time retaining people. A lot of people are retiring. And, um, you know, I know not every police officer is an angel. I was talking with somebody in my, opera, in my office who uh, was talking about her brother. She had a lot of confidence in him. She was here to talk to me about uh, police reforms. And uh, I actually believe that the vast majority of police officers, like your brother um, and your family members, were good people. And a part of what we have to do is just make sure that when we have these assaults, which are increasing, uh, that we have just punishment because we need to do that for the protection, not only of the law enforcement officers, but the communities they serve. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and uh, I'm going to yield back time because I know we've got two other uh, people talking. And, you know, I thought you've done a great job over the last two days. Um, I've tried to be here. I had an emergency and had to leave for about an hour and a half, but I tried to be here for a, a business emergency. emergency. Um, but I thought that you presented yourself well, and there was a lot of pressure. Um, and uh, that demonstrates uh, a certain temperament or poise. I can't imagine what's going on inside your head, but uh, at least overtly, uh, you did very well, and you should be proud of that. It's not an easy thing. It's, it's very easy up here um, to feel comfortable right, because there's 22 of us, and it's not like you can really come at us. Uh, so you have an arm tied behind your back, and I'm sure that there were a number of things you'd like to say, but uh, time didn't allow. But, um, you know, I just want to commend you, <clears throat> your family, uh, your daughter, who has been glowing uh, every time you talk, and I appreciate your service. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Senator Thank Tillis. You, Senator.